Hello everybody, my name's Connie from Minerva and today I have a Liberty pattern haul for you. So I have 12 patterns in total, three of which are children's wear, and all of these Liberty patterns are fairly new and actually based on Liberty's archives of patterns. So they have a slight retro twist but with a definite modern feel. All of these patterns run from a size 6 to a size 22, so there's a good size range. And as I'm showing you the patterns, they will be popping up on screen and also there will be links below. I'm also going to be showing you some fabrics to go with each of the patterns suggesting kind of whether it's cotton or whether you need to use velvet stuff like that just to give you some ideas and those will also be linked below. However if you do have any questions as I'm going along or any comments you can leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible and if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same or tutorials sew alongs you name it then you can click on the follow button up above next to the one that says as Minerva and you can keep up to date with any new videos that we've created for you. And with that let's get on with the pattern haul. So the first pattern I have to show you today is actually the one that I'm wearing and this is the Tia Boho Sleeve Shirt. So I've done mine in variation C but there are in fact six different variations. So you can either choose to have a mandarin collar like I've got, a more traditional pointed collar, you can have um, flared sleeves or this puff sleeve look like I've gone for. And you can also have things like bow detailing around the neck or include trim. There's very, very many different options with this pattern, which is why it's so good and versatile. But all of the patterns feature a kind of loose, oversized look with gathering details and a concealed button placket down the front. Now, this pattern is actually described as being easy on the pattern itself, but I would say that this is more of a medium slash confident beginner because it does have the button plackets down the front, you've got to use interfacing, and there are just quite a lot of steps to it. I wouldn't say that this is a project that you can mock up in a day. So on the back of each of these Liberty patterns, you have the suitable fabrics that they've suggested that you should use to make these um, patterns up in. So on the back of this one, we've got cotton, linen, or silk. So I've chosen to make mine in a cotton linen blend, and this is Liberty's own Betsy print. This is an oversized floral print, and because it's got that cotton linen blend, it's really wearable, breathable, and also quite soft. And because it's very vibrant in its colour, as you can see, uh, you don't want that to sort of run in the wash. And with these Liberty products, you definitely won't have that. They're amazing quality and can be washed loads of times. But this shirt would actually also work with a lot of the other fabrics that I'm going to be showing you throughout this haul. So if you like this design, but you prefer some of the other fabrics, then definitely take note down of them. Um, any cottons really, or linens or silks, as I already said. So all of these patterns are really well presented. They have a quite large actually pattern envelope with the design on the front and then on the back you've got the sizing chart, how much fabric you'll need and any notions and trims. So for this pattern you have to have buttons and also interfacing. So they have all of that information on the back for you which you can look at before you purchase online. And then in the actual pattern itself we've got the envelope with the pattern pieces in and also the instructions as done separately. So with mine I actually decided to trace all of the pattern pieces because I wanted to save the sort of blueprint of the original pattern so that if I wanted to do any of the other variations in the future I could do that. So I can imagine this shirt looking really nice just as an everyday shirt or if you wanted to kind of elevate it into a work look, I think it would look really nice with some high-waisted, smart, casual trousers, such as the Nina Lee Portobello trousers, or McCall's number 6901 would look amazing if with this shirt just tucked in, um, some smart shoes or heels, I think that would look perfect for the office. Next up I have this amazing pattern which I think is one of my favourites and that is the Florence Palazzo suit. So this is actually a two-part pattern so you can either make just the top or the trousers or wear them in combination to look more like a suit or even a jumpsuit. So in the top variations we've got two different variations, either just a tie front with a v-neck showing a bit of cleavage or with a little um, collar around the front but also a tie as well that ties in the back. And then for the trouser variations you've got the big palazzo like wide um, trousers which are fitted at the top with a zip or you've got the shorts which are also fitted at the top and a little bit more flowy. So I think if you did the 
v-neck tie front version with the shorts it would give more of a beachy look and then if you did the version with the collar and the full length trousers it would look actually quite smart and I think almost like a 70s style jumpsuit because you've got the big wide trouser legs. Now this pattern is described as being easy but just bear in mind that you do have a zip in the back for the trouser closure. You also have pockets to do and there is a back yoke facing as well so just bear that in mind if you are a complete beginner maybe don't try this pattern as yet in terms of fabric that they've suggested we've got cotton silk linen or light velvet so I think this pattern is very versatile and that you can either wear it in the summer or you could wear it dressed up a bit more in the winter with the light velvet I could imagine it would be so beautiful for an office party or a Christmas party in a light velvet but the fabric that I've actually got to show you today is this fabric this really bright linen so this is this 100% linen enzyme washed fabric and what it has is actually a very slubby weave so you can see sort of the natural textures and fibers coming through which I love and because it's linen it's going to be so easy and such a joy to sew with because it's not going to slip around everywhere it's going to respond really well to the iron and because it's got a natural fiber you can wash it well it's not going to fade and also it's going to dry well well and just be comfortable to wear because it's absorbent things like that so this is a medium weight fabric and I would actually decide to do the top and the trousers both in this red and I would do the collar variation and I think it would be such a striking look can you imagine all in red uh, especially with the trousers the flowing palazzo style trousers I think it would be gorgeous and especially in linen it would be great in the summer as well the next pattern I have to show you is another top and this is the Esther tunic top so this is actually a very easy pattern because it's a slip on um, there's no sort of formal closure like a zip and there are four different variations so you can either make this pattern with a slit sort of a V slit at the front you can do it with the tie closure or you can choose to add or take away trim and another variation is that you can either have puff sleeves kind of like the ones that I've done on this pattern or you can have a straight more flowy sleeve I think this pattern is super wearable it's got some gathering details just to make it a bit more interesting but it's also very casual and what I would actually do is pair it with the Nini Colottes from Named Clothing to make a kind of full flowy very comfy look which would be good in sort of a plain all over fabric to make it look a bit more sophisticated or in a pattern like the Liberty one that they've included on the cover for more of a beachy look. So on the back they've suggested to use either cotton, crepe de chine or silk depending on the effect and how much drape you want. And the fabric that I've chosen to show you today is this John Caldor crepe de chine. This is a polyester crepe and I chose it specifically because of its amazing movement. So if I just open it out fully you'll be able to see. So I've chosen a little bit more of a darker fabric because I wanted to show you sort of how it would look if it was dressed up a bit more sort of nighttime appropriate and I think with the sort of abstract digital um, roses and flowers all over this fabric it's really classy and with the Nini clots would make such a beautiful um, full look. This fabric also comes in two different colorways and the drape as I said is just amazing and would look amazing on the gathering details of the top because you've got those gathered sleeves and the gathering um, around the bust area so this fabric would just hang so prettily with that however I think that you could also make this tunic quite boho if you did it in a linen with sort of the pom-pom trim details or you could do sequin details for the trim I think you could dress it up either way and for that reason it's a very versatile pattern moving on I now have a dress pattern for you and this is the Alexa frill dress pattern and this is a very delicate more sort of girly design and it has three different variations where you can either do a frill around the collar 
or add a frill onto the skirt or just do it sort of completely plain which I like because you can dress it up according to your preference. This is classed as an intermediate pattern because it does have a zip down the back and also the frill detailing around the collar and I think this dress is really wearable. I would wear it personally to sort of lunch with friends or even as a day dress, a picnic dress, something like that. It's very casual but if you decided and this is what I would do, is to do the frills in actually a contrasting colour. So I would choose my main body of fabric, pick out one of the colours from that, and then do the frills in those sections, just to make a little bit of contrast and visual interest. Now for this dress, they have suggested to make it in cotton, satin, or poplin and there's also a lining so you would pick a lining fabric such as a polyester satin something like that or even a linen if you want to make it a little bit more breathable and the fabric I've got to show you today is a linen cotton blend and this is from Liberty themselves and is definitely one of my favorites so this is the Liberty of London Strawberry Thief Augusta linen cotton fabric in navy and it's quite a small scale print but it has little birds on it with strawberries um, and flowers and sort of paisley prints things like that and this is actually the same blend of fabric as the shirt that I'm actually wearing so it's the same exact material again that washes very well has good vibrancy of color um, and is very comfortable to wear and also sort of absorbent of any sweat things like that having a cotton linen blend as a natural sort of fiber base is a really good idea for any shirts and things like that that are close to the skin because they are going to be super comfortable especially with a dress like this which is everyday wear so again what I would do with this fabric is use this as the main body of fabric um, and then I would actually pick out perhaps the base colour which is navy or one of the lighter colours such as like the duck egg sort of blue lighter blue colour and I would use that for the frills just to make that contrast and make a little bit of interest there so that is my suggestion for this fabric. Next up we have another intermediate level pattern and this is the Carmague cowboy shirt. Now interestingly this is actually a unisex pattern and it has four different variations for you to try. So some of them have pockets or you can add piping details um, or you could have contrast sort of lapel um, areas and what I really like about this pattern is the contrasting or you know not contrasting depending on what you decide top stitching which if I was going to make this I would definitely make into a feature also depending on what fabric you choose to make this in you can either play up the western elements or make it more of a casual top like they have in the picture so they've gone with a floral sort of mustardy floral liberty print but if you were to do it in a denim or a chambray it would definitely have more of that cowboy western aesthetic feel to it so in terms of the actual fabric they've suggested they've suggested cotton chambray or denim so you can have sort of a wide variety there either make it more western or not so much but I have definitely gone down the western route as I have got this cotton to show you which has a definite denim look to it so this fabric is the Robert Kaufman Union cotton chambray fabric in the color indigo and I wanted to really play up that western western aesthetic so this fabric is very sort of chambray denim looking of course but it also has this repeat pattern on it which I think really kind of plays into that cowboy aspect and I really like that about it just makes it a little bit more interesting than plain denim and also because it is a cotton chambray it's a lot lighter than normal denim which is going to make it a bit more easy to wear maybe a bit easier to work with as well not so heavy um, and definitely more comfortable and less heavy on the skin as well so to go with that full cowboy look I would actually pair this shirt and tuck it into some jeans such as the McCall's 58 seven four pattern which is the perfect jeans or alternatively you've got the closet core jeans in the style ginger but overall I really like that this pattern is unisex because you can make it you know for anyone really um, and you can either make it a bit oversized or more fitted as you prefer um, it's a really versatile pattern again as with many of these patterns and you can definitely dress it up with the trim which you'll find is a common theme with a lot of these patterns Liberty has suggested to use trim in a lot of them so you can kind of take the look where you want it now our next 
next dress is an absolute showstopper um, and it's actually easy it's considered easy because there's no um, closure no formal closure it's just a slip on so this is a perfect dress for if you want to make something that's a bit more sort of evening appropriate but maybe you don't have the skills to make a really complex evening gown and that pattern is the Beatrix maxi dress now they've chosen to do it in this silk which I think is stunning and makes it more of an evening appropriate gown as I've said but you can make it a bit more daytime appropriate because there are two different variations so in the picture they've done the variation with the long sleeves but you can actually do a sleeveless variation and make it a little bit shorter with a frill on the bottom so that would make it perhaps more daytime appropriate but personally I would go full out with this make it in silk make it in something that's luxurious and looks really expensive and also both of these patterns have a little tie around the waist so that cinches you in because it is quite a billowing maxi style so if you have that tie around the waist it's just going to bring the whole look together and give a bit more a, a sort of hourglass silhouette now in terms of things that you will need to make this gown you will of course need the fabric of your choice and you will also need some bias tape so you can either buy bias tape or you can make it and there's little bias tape making tools and you can just make it out of the fabric that you've already chosen to do your main dress in or if you want a little bit of a contrast which is always I think a nice detail to kind of open up a gown see the inside of it and it's got a contrast bias tape I think it looks really pretty so it's totally up to you in that regard now on the back it suggests that you can make it in cotton so that would be a more daytime appropriate picnic sort of wear and that's where you could do the sleeveless version with the frill on the bottom or you can make it in silk for that more glamorous evening time look and the fabric that I've got to show you today is a silk and it's a Liberty own silk so I'll just show you that so this is the fabric it's amazing it's Liberty's own fabric print again and this is their great Missenden Belgravia silk satin fabric now what I love about this fabric is first of all the drape of course because it's a very lightweight silk and perfectly drapey for this maxi style it's not a very thick silk you know it's not upholstery sort of silk it's very lightweight and drapey and very comfortable for that reason but it also has a fantastic shiny sort of element to it not shiny like satin exactly not cheap looking at all but just sort of a lustrous expensive look to it um very you know you know that it's silk when you put this on and when you feel it because it's got such a soft feel to it such a nice handle as well now this silk is in the multicolored option but there's also two different other options if you wanted to check that out and all of these liberty silks are printed in italy finest printing available um, and it definitely shows in the quality and also I think it's quite nice just to have an overall Liberty look like I've done with this shirt I've got the Liberty fabric and the Liberty pattern I think it just kind of ties it all in nicely another pattern which you can use silk with is this next pattern which is the Xena wrap skirt now this is the first skirt pattern that I've shown you and it's classed as being easy which we love um, as it has just got that wrap skirt style so it doesn't have a formal closure like a zip or anything or buttons that you have to worry about it is just a wrap around skirt and with this skirt there are two variations so you can either do it a little bit shorter and choose to have the frill or no frill and make it a little bit longer it's up to you you can really mix and match so you could do it shorter with the frill if you wanted to now they've suggested using lightweight fabrics with a lot of drape such as cotton or silk so I think that if you did this in a cotton and have maybe no frill on it that would be an amazing kind of sarong style beach cover up you could just toss it on over your swimming costume when you come out of the sea and it would just be a nice little flowy free and airy cover up but if you did choose to add the frill and make it a little bit longer and you chose to do it in a more silky or satin fabric that would look so glam for the evening especially if you made some kind of matching top that would look amazing so this skirt would work really well with the fabric that I just showed you with the previous pattern the um, strawberry thief um, silk that would look incredible but it would also work really well with the fabric that I've got to show you now which is this one 
Wow, how amazing is this? This is in the colour Amethyst, as you might have guessed. This is a Liberty owned fabric and it's a silk satin fabric. Again, the Belgravia fabric. This one is amazing because it has that same lustrous shine, exactly the same, but it's very lightweight. It feels so luxurious and expensive, just as the other one did. And I think for the kind of bias cut frills, it's going to hang so nicely and drape and just catch kind of the light in all of the right places. However, if you didn't like that tone, there's also quite a few other dual tone fabrics in this same silk satin, so you can have a check out of all of them. And yes, that's the Xena wrap skirt. I think that this combo would be so pretty, or in a sort of darker green would look amazing as well, just dressed up for the evening or in a cotton for a more day appropriate sort of beach cover up. Our next pattern is another dress and this is the Bella Tea Dress which is a cutesy retro sort of inspired everyday dress. Now this pattern comes in two different variations so you can either make the dress kind of plain um, but with trim and a little bow round the neck or you could actually include a little Peter Pan collar um, with a slit underneath it so a little kind of keyhole um, detail and I think with all of these trims and the Peter Pan collar depending on which ones you do it definitely has a retro feel to it almost like a 50s 60s kind of inspired take on a modern everyday dress and you have a lot of flexibility with all of the trimming so you can use eyelet trimming and um, lace trimming you could even make up your own such as pom-poms or sequins or really go for like a 18th century kind of trim it's really up to you and again we see this trim come back time and time again with these liberty patterns and I think it's really a good way to kind of make the dress a bit more unique and a bit more your own. This is an intermediate level pattern there are some more difficult sections such as the zip and also the snap closures but it's not so difficult it's not kind of advanced and in terms of fabric like with many of the liberty fabric options you've got cotton linen or silk and I've actually chosen this Italia brunette fabric this is a cotton linen blend and this is in the color ochre and I love Italia brunette fabric because it's such amazing quality and has such bright colors so this is a really autumnal sort of um, mustardy deep mustard color with a tint of brown in it and you can see the weave a little bit of, with this one and it has that sort of natural linen texture to it and you feel it again with linen it's very easy to sew with because it's very sturdy it's going to be nice to sew with and it's also going to take well to the iron also this fabric does come in quite a few different fabric color options which are all designed to be kind of compatible and go with each other so for instance if you decided to make the main body of the dress in this fabric then you could always do the Peter Pan collar in a slightly different color also Atelier Brunette also the linen cotton blend and it would go really well it is a medium weight and I would say it's a slightly more heavy medium weight fabric this one it definitely has some body to it it's not see-through um, and it's going to be breathable at the same time because it is linen and a natural fiber so that's the Bella tea dress I think it's a really wearable everyday option and you can dress it up with the trims and the pockets so it's a really useful little dress just to have in your collection. Our next pattern is another everyday dress and this is the Bertie Shift dress. Now this dress is very casual, just pull on over um, and it comes in two different variations. It's a shift dress so it comes just above the knees and it's got a very sort of straight down cylindrical form um, but the two variations make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit of gathering detail going along on the front just above the bust and then also in variation A you've got a standing collar which you can choose to do in a sequin or sort of trimmed fabric to make a little bit more of contrast and a bit more interest so you could do this one in sort of a plain fabric for the main body of the dress and then for the standing collar do something that's kind of a bit more out there sequined as I said would look amazing with this one so this design is quite loose fitting and very similar to the sleeves on the shirt that I'm wearing they're sort of puffed 
gathered sleeves which are put into a cuff at the bottom with some buttons so you have got the button and interfacing details to deal with there and again this pattern is an average or intermediate skill level just because of the cuff detailing and the gathers around the bust area now in terms of fabric options we have very similar fabrics to most of the liberty patterns and that is cotton silk linen or light velvet actually with this one so you can make it in a fabric that's a little bit more heavier such as a velvet and dress it up um, for sort of winter parties anything like that it would be amazing for but the fabric that I've chosen to show you today is a tensile linen mix and I think this is probably my most favorite fabric out of this whole video that I'm showing you I just love the feel and the color of it I think it's amazing and this is the meat milk slub linen tensile and this is in the color cider and what I love about this one is the sort of burnt brick reddish color it's kind of a, a faded um, red with a little bit more orangey brown tone in there it's quite an autumnal color actually but I could also imagine wearing this year round and because it is that linen tensile mix it has a kind of linen look to it in that you can see the weave but it's got the light weightness and the drapiness of the tensile so it's kind of the best of both worlds and I think with the gathers along the front of the Bertie dress it's gonna work really well I would say probably for this fabric you would need to use quite a stiff interfacing for the collar because it is a standing collar so just bear that in mind you might have to experiment a little bit when making it but yes I love this fabric and uh, I think I'm going to be making something in it uh, for sure because it's just so comfortable soft and has an amazing drape so those were actually all of the women's wear patterns and now we'll move on to the three children's wear ones so the first of which is the kiki dungaree set so this pattern is actually for children aged 3 to 14 so it covers kind of young children into teens um, and is a really good pattern in that respect i really like that aspect of it and it has loads of different variations so you can see in the picture this little girl has got kind of a pinafore style dungaree dress on but you can make it also in traditional dungarees with the trousers so the trousers are sort of straight legged dungarees they're not flares or anything the variations and alterations in this pattern which you can do are the way that the straps lay across the back so some of them kind of are singular straps um, that come inwards or some of them are straps that join just at the very top and you can also create a variation in the pocket so some of the designs have a pocket on the front section and some don't so those are just the variations that you can do with this pattern in terms of materials that you will need you will need your fabric of course but also some buttons because there are sort of the two button details on the front as you have with any pinafore really and then you will also need a zip for the closure in terms of fabric I would suggest that you want something a little bit heavier such as a medium or very sort of light heavyweight fabric they've suggested denim cotton or corduroy and the fabric that I've got to show you today is this Dashwood 21 needle cord fabric this is I think a very 70s sort of retro print and I love it for that reason it's kind of muted greeny autumnal colors again we have a lot of autumnal colors in this video and the difference with the needle cord as opposed to normal corduroy is that the kind of ridges which are called whales in needle cord are just that little bit smaller a little bit more delicate and I think more fitting on a child frame just to be that bit smaller um, it's also less thick so a bit more appropriate for this pattern because you don't want something that's really heavy but I think this fabric choice would be so so cute in this design especially if you picked out buttons that perhaps were the sort of aquary blue color I think that would look very pretty or orange um, and it's it's also very soft and wearable for children it's not a heavy corduroy as I've already said it's a bit lighter this next pattern is for children a little bit younger so it's for children aged six months to four years and hence why it's in a slightly smaller packaging 
So this is the Mabel tiered dress and it's so, so cute. I love this one. If this came in an adult dress, I would definitely buy it because I loved tiered dresses for the summer. Now this pattern has seven different variations, including whether you want to do the tiered skirt or not, whether you want to have a little elasticated puff sleeve. There's also a little summer hat in there, which is so sweet and would be perfect matching to the main uh, fabric body of the dress. This design does have a fastening which is a very small zip and also of course if you make the puff sleeve version you will need to have some elastic with that as well. They have suggested on the back of this pattern to make it up in cotton or linen and the fabric that I have to show you today is again a cotton linen blend and this is Liberty's own fabric again uh, and this is the Wiltshire Augusta Linen Cotton and this is in the shade Autumn. I told you we have a lot of autumnal and wintry fabrics in this haul for you. And I love this one. It's quite um, sort of a bit more mature. It's a bit less girly and frilly perhaps in the fabric that I'm wearing, but still so pretty. And because it's made of linen and cotton as a blend, it's perfect for children's wear because it can be washed many times over um, and it's not going to fade or shrink or anything like that but of course before you start any sewing project you should pre-wash the fabric but after that it's definitely not going to shrink at all. This is classed as a light to medium weight fabric and I would definitely say it's on the slightly lighter um, end of that spectrum which is perfect for children's wear because you want something that's lightweight and breathable you don't want them to be weighed down at all and yes that is the Mabel tiered dress very cute I think perfect for summer really. And finally, our last children's pattern is the penny collar dress. So this again is the same as the last one. So it's for children aged 12 months to four years. And it's just a really cute little um, dress with a frill on the bottom, kind of like a dropped waist um, dress with the frill. And then it has a contrasting or not contrasting, depending on what you want to do, collar but there are actually six variations. But with all of them consistently, there are pleats at the neckline and also a back zip. So with the different variations, you can either include pockets, you can add little puff sleeves or three quarter length sleeves. You can include to add the frill at the bottom or not. There's a lot of different variations um, and they're all very cute. <laughs> In terms of fabric, Liberty has suggested something a tiny bit heavier. So you've either got cotton, denim or linen and the fabric that I've got is this cotton now this is the cotton tana lawn so this is actually on the lighter side so it's really up to you what you think you would prefer for your child really um, but this is actually the same print as the fabric that I'm wearing but just on a very much smaller scale so this again is the Betsy fabric tana lawn um, and this is in the shade candy and what I love about this fabric is that it's super soft and it's also very vibrant again with all of the Liberty prints but it does have a little bit more drape than the one that I'm perhaps wearing because it is lawn so it's going to drape a little bit nicer because it is that little bit lighter now that is actually the end of this Liberty pattern haul. Thank you so much if you watched all the way to the end. It means a lot. And don't forget that if you press the follow button above, then you can see any more videos that we make at Minerva, be it pattern hauls, fabric hauls, or tutorials. And if you do end up making any of the patterns that I've talked about today or using any of the fabrics, I would love to see it. And you can actually sign up with Minerva today. You can create a free account, share the makes that you've made, upload pictures, tag products, and comment on other people's posts to interact with them and be inspired and finally if you do have any comments or questions don't forget to leave them below and we can answer them and that's everything for now and i'll see you next time bye